so we are going to begin and to begin with i have room temperature water you can use cold but not extremely cold and then we have the all-purpose flour uh, for samosas you have to use all-purpose flour so i'm going to also use some salt i don't use sugar i'm going to sieve this yeah it's good to see because it's already open so i'm going to sieve it i don't know what is inside so it's always good to sieve your flour once i'm done sieving i'm going to add a little bit of the salt you don't need to use a lot of salt and then i'm going to mix this with my hands and then i'm going to add in water bit by bit until uh, the dough comes together we want to need this dough minus the oil because you don't need oil when you are making samosa pockets some people might use oil but i prefer doing that it makes my work easier and uh, that is why i told you i'm going to make samosa pockets my own way the easiest way that can make you handle your uh, samosa pockets so i'm going to transfer this uh, on a flat surface and then knead the dough until it is a little no until it is soft <laughs> i'm so used to saying a little bit until i almost say a little bit so we're gonna knead this until it is soft yeah so at this point it's uh done and this is how it looks yeah, it's soft very soft so i'm gonna make it into a spherical shape and then i'm going to cut into smaller balls so i'm going to bring in the board because i want to use my board to cut uh, the, the dough we're gonna put some flour here where we're going to lay the balls i love cutting into smaller sizes so that is the size you see that size yeah, that is the size of the dough that we are going to cut so that we can make uh, the pockets. So always make sure that they are of the same sizes. If you have a weighing scale, I think that is more accurate. As for me, I think I'll just eyeball them and uh, see that they are of the same shape. Sometimes it's never accurate. That one I know for sure. So... That is how I'm going to survive to make these small balls. I have uh, done all the balls and you can see the size. I tried the accuracy. So I'm going to sprinkle some flour here and we are going to start making the pockets. This is the first stage, like the second stage. The ball is, is it the third? The third stage because when you need the flour, it's the first the second this is now the third stage where we are going to spread them out apply some oil sprinkle some flour we keep layering until uh i think whatever i can handle so let's begin the reason why i make them into smaller balls is for me to just spread out smaller sheets that one uh in that case it's easier it's easier to make them i think that is uh, self-explanatory so i make them like this it's not necessarily i make them uh, all round so i'm going to do the second one i apply oil on this one so this is basically not to make the pockets stick together whenever you want to separate them applying the oil is the best thing you can do and then we are going to sprinkle some flour not too much but make sure they touch the entire uh, sheet and then we are going to layer them so i'm going to put this on top of this one and then make another one and do the same so this is the third one i think i'm going to do like six of them and then do a different uh, layering so sprinkle some flour make sure the flour touches the edges because that is why it's a little bit tricky so i'm going to apply this as i prepare another one so guys this is what i've done i've made this 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 and this so we are going to start with this and spread it out and dry it on the pan so let me use this flour i've run out of the other flour Ugh. yeah handle it carefully 
and then sprinkle some flour here turn it over and sprinkle some flour once more and then now spread it out like you would uh, spread chapati or paratha so that is how i handle it i spread it out according to the size of my pan so my pan is hot i'm gonna lay it here and then i let it heat up a little bit and then turn it over so i'll turn it the first round oh, my pan is very small but i think i spread it out uh, without even figuring out the size of the pan but it's okay i'm gonna handle it yeah so i'll keep turning it until like four times so this towel over here is where i lay them as i continue to make others it's easier for me to do the separation you see when i want to separate it's now easier to separate them can you see that but i'm going to uh, let them sit here until i'm done with all of them before i can start now separating them i'm going to cover them like this i had to switch to voiceover because of the background noise from the kids so i covered them and uh co by covering them it retains the moisture so i'm going to separate them as you can see they separate nicely the first uh cover is always it doesn't look nice but it has its own use it's not like i'm going to throw it away as you can see it's they separate nicely and they are very thin yeah i had to separate them while they are hot they come out uh, nicely when they are hot not when they have cooled down so i'm going to separate them and then shape them i'm going to use the lid of a pot to shape them you can use even a plate to shape them i just press the lid on them and then use a knife to just uh cut into round and nice shapes and after that we shall be making the pocket i had to bring it closer so that you can see how thin and nice it is if you have a big and wider pan trust me you'll even get better uh, pockets those ones can even make you uh, spring rolls, yeah, something like that. So these uh, sheets were a lot. They were a lot. This can really serve me for a, for a long time. So it's time to shape them. And I love using the lid of the pot. And I prefer this size because it's almost the size of the samosa sheets that I've made. So I'm going to press down the sheets because they are a lot and then cut all round into round shape almost the shape uh, uh, the shape of that lid that is why we are using that lid and that is why i'm pressing hard whatever i'm removing from uh, the sheets i'm going to fry them and make them into crunchy snacks i'm going to cut them into half i love shaping them when they are in this uh, shape and i love how thin they are like if you want to make samosa sheets just make them as thin as they are these were a lot like this can make a lot of uh, samosa pockets or can make a lot of samosa that can even serve visit let's now make the filling the filling is always everything on the samosa apart from the thin a sheet also the filling has to be very flavorful so i'm adding a little bit of the oil into my pan and then i'm going to infuse this oil using some spices i love infusing my oil with spices so what i have here is um coriander powder, cumin powder, uh, garlic powder, and also some um, paprika, yeah, smoked paprika. I also have some curry powder as well. So I'm going to infuse my oil. After that, I'm going to add in the green onions because I love green onions when it comes to samosas. They give good flavors. Like green onions are just also one of those key ingredients when it comes to samosas so i'm adding like a lot of them but i'll start with the white part i'm going to cook this with the along with the spices and the oil until they get a little bit translucent before i can add in the minced meat this time i'm going to use minced meat yeah and then later on after they are done we are going to also introduce in the rest of the leaves of the green onions so i'm going to add in the lean minced meat i love the lean minced meat because it cooks faster and after that i'm going to give it a good mix until it is nicely combined with all the ingredients that we have in the pan cover it and let it cook for like um 
10 minutes actually this meat was very tender so it cooked in 15 minutes i'm not a fan of minced meat when it comes to samosas i love green grams but today i think i just i just decided to change the flavor and just do minced meat today and then i'm gonna cover it let it cook for 10 minutes after that i will uncover it and then we shall be adding in the green onions but i'm going to mix it a little bit before i can add in the green onions but I've, uh, after i've added the green onions i'm not going to let the green onions cook i'm just going to leave them inside the meat and turn off the heat i just love the flavor of green onions i i, I used to use leeks before but i found out that green onions do better with samosas compared to leeks because leeks tend to be dry and sometimes they don't have flavors and these green onions they have a lot of liquids the liquids even make the the the, the minced meat uh be to be not dry yeah not to be dry so that is why i prefer green onions and i prefer green onions because of the flavors i think that is all that makes me go for green onions so we are done i'm going to put it I, i'm going to put this aside and then let it cool down and then we shall fill the pockets and that is it so guys uh here we have our filling which is the minced meat I initially wanted to use uh, green grabs but they became soggy. I decided to go for the minced meat. And we have our pockets over here. So I'm going to start making the pockets and do the filling as well. I also have this. This is a mixture of water and flour. You just mix the paste until it is super smooth. And then that, that is what you are going to use to glue your samosas together. So... Can you see how thin that uh, uh, sheet is, the samosa sheet? See that? I love it thin because when you make it, it becomes very crunchy and you bite through it nicely. I honestly love thin sheets because sometimes you find some sheets are doughy. When you bite into them, it, it's like you're fighting with food. So... I'm going to, this is how I do it. So I bring this other end. I don't bring it up to uh, this edge. I just bring it halfway here or maybe here so that you remain with something that if you just put it over like this, it covers nicely and you have space up here to put your filling in. So I'm going to apply my paste here and then... Uh, bring it together and there you have it so if you have an extension like this you can choose to leave it if the sheet is thin you will fold it like this if the sheet is a bit doughy you will have to cut it and then uh it's easier for you to use this other end to wrap it so we are going to add in the filling So I will just put my filling from the top. Always make sure that your filling is very flavorful. That is what makes the samosa yummy. Apart from having thin and nice pockets or sheets. So we are going to also, uh, sorry, we are also going to glue this. As I said, if this sheet is extending up to this point, you just fold it like this. Yeah, just like that. And then, oh, and then you glue it together. I had to fold here because it's extending too much. So you glue it like that. And there you have your pocket. Can you see that? Like you have your samosa. It looks nice. Yeah, and very thin. So I'm going to put this aside. Let me do one more demonstration for you and then I'll do the rest uh, off camera. So you bring this other end 
up to halfway yeah halfway so that you leave the space here like a larger sheet so that when you get to fold it gets to cover the entire place and you remain with this uh, a bigger space to work with when you want to remove to, to put the filling so you apply the paste if you feel like it's a bit messy you can use the spoon i'm so used to using my hands i feel like they are faster so i'm going to bring it to the other end like this and you have it when you have thin sheets like this just be gentle with them so we are going to add the filling inside and then we fold it like this yeah like this apply some paste after you apply some paste and then you fold it over and cover just like that And there you have it, your samosa. So I'll continue with the rest of camera and then we shall be back. I'm done and this is what we have. I also have extra uh, sheets that I'm going to show you how I store them. So this is what I usually do. I have my serviettes, these are serviettes. I just put them together then cut the edges so that we can uh, separate them, you know this end is sealed so that i can have each sheet like this uh to place on the bottom of the container that i'm going to use to store my samosas i'm using these containers and also these containers depending on the quantity of the samosas so i'll start with this and show you what i want how i do and show you how i do store them so i place my serviettes one serviette this sheet over here on the bottom of the container and then what i do next is place the samosa like this this is one samosa so two samosas if i feel like the, if i notice like they are going to stick together I get another uh, serviette like this and separate them because when you now want to use them you might find them sticking together and they might rip off so the next uh, thing I'm going to do is align another serviette on top of the samosas put other samosas again and then cover them with another serviette and then put again more samosas this container takes like six of them six pieces so this uh, let's get a smaller one yeah so this is enough and then now uh, finally we cover them like this with the two and then use the the cover of the container and cover them like this you can uh, store this in the cool area not in the freezer if you choose to fr to freeze this i don't know what will happen because samosas break a lot after freezing because they get a lot of water from the icing yeah and too much cold so make sure you put on the cold area the cold area can uh, sustain the samosas for up to two weeks yeah, but if you choose to freeze them, don't use the paper towels. Use the parchment paper that we do use in baking. Cut them in smaller sizes like I've cut like this and uh, use them to cover them and then freeze. After freezing, you can always remove them uh, earlier before preparing them. Defrost them and then put in the microwave for them to dry a little bit. In the microwave, I mean, you just put them with the container like this. And then after defrosting, that is when you'll be removing them one by one and then frying them. If you remove them directly, they will be having a lot of water and they'll be breaking. So my advice is just use 
the cold area instead of the freezer to store your samosas so the next one like this again this will make you eat samosas like every day if you want to eat samosas like every day it's very much possible for you to eat samosas every day so normally if i want to like eat samosas every day this is what i normally do just store my samosas and when i want to fry them i put i pick like if i want to i pick two or three and then fry them and just take them at that very moment i wanted to take them so i don't fry them and then come and uh warm them again no so we're gonna cover this as well don't be afraid to just pat them down because there's no damage that is going to happen to them so we have this and we're gonna do the next one again yeah this is something i just learned on my own i did not see it anywhere so it's something that i just decided like if i do like this my samosas will stay for long i've done it and i've seen the results that is why i chose to share with you yeah this method and we have that cover this as well and there we have our samosas i actually have some let me show you i have some in the fridge oh these are the sheets that uh these are the, the those remains that when i cut the samosas these are the remains i'm yet to fry them for the kids so i have some that i've kept here this is dawa So these are samosas actually this is where i keep them i don't keep them in the freezer these are from like uh, five days ago can you see that yeah so this paper towel just absorbs the moisture so when you remove like this all you have to do is just fry them no hard work there so i'll just put them like this and then return them As for the sheets that have remained, I'm going to store them the same way, but you really have to have some patience when you're storing this because this is what I do. I just put the paper towel like that and store piece by piece, piece by piece like this, then put another towel like this and fold it like this. You see that? so you don't get to use a lot of paper towels actually because you've cut them into smaller uh, sizes and then put this again because i would want to fold it i don't want it to lie on top of the other door when it comes to now uh, removing them from the fridge they'll stick together and spoil so this is what i do and the time i'm removing them from the fridge for this edge not to break i'll be warming them first in the microwave as they are like this covered and then i'll be able to separate them so guys i'm done on the bottom are samosas and on the top are the sheets i've stored that is how i've stored them and i hope this video will be of help to you to make your samosas for long-term use so until next time bye guys